Good evening, everybody. My name is Bufang, and welcome back to another episode of the Hunger Games Simulator. This is episode 14, and I have a suggestion from Grand Admiral Thrawn, who said, let's do Scooby-Doo characters. To this, I said, all right. But when it comes to Scooby-Doo, there is a certain show brought up by an act that was made by an actor in the office known as Velma. This character but Latino. And I said, you know what? Screw all the negativity around that show. And instead, how about you focus on the positives of instead the best edition, Mystery Inc. So I decided to pull characters who were only in Mystery Inc. So I would give a quick overview of these guys. But at the same time, I also want you all to watch the show. I believe it's on HBO Max. I'll look. I don't know where else it is, but you can go look for it. Trust me. There's a reason it's considered the best show that these Scooby-Doo characters have been in, hands down. Like, it is the objective best. Uh, before we get started here, characters are rooting for? Fred. The reason you like Fred... Fred. Like him because he's never set in stone. He's good at traps, but the only reason they have him super good at traps is this one. This one, they actually give him a defined personality. And the other one is Sheriff Bronson, because if you may notice, because if you don't know, he's voiced by the same guy who did Joe, and he's basically Joe if he was put into a TV show. And if he was put into a kid's show. Let's proceed. The bloodbath is retributed, stand on the podium, the horn sounds. Fred finds a backpack full of camping equipment. Grady Gator overpowers Shaggy, killing him? How do you kill Ultimate Shaggy? Jeebus, cripes. Uh, okay, I guess I should go over the cast, but Grady Gator was is a famous monster. It's a famous monster in disguise. Non Blake, Daphne's mother, runs away. Angie Dinkley kills Harlan with a hatchet. Harlan is a major character in the finale. Uh, good guy. One of the few good guys, but I guess he's dead. Judy and Brad run away. They're Fred's parents. These two are monsters. They disguise themselves as Fred and an older version of Daphne just to get them to give up, to give up the treasure they had. Just to get his own son to give up the treasure that they had. Anyways, they both run away. Hot Dog Water takes a handful of throwing knives. The introduction to Velma being a lesbian and her first lesbian partner. Yeah. Scooby runs away from the cornucopia. Char Gargothicon grabs a sword. Uh, monster. Da Daphne breaks Cassidy's nose. Cassidy... One of the show's underlying mysteries is that there has been more than one group that have done the thing that Scooby do, that this group is doing. Like, okay. And this is the previous generation. This is the previous Fred, the previous Daphne, the previous Velma. And the no, previous yeah. Previous Velma equivalent, Mr. E and previous Shaggy equi both previous Velma equivalents. Alright, no, Velma, Shaggy. Grows into his more character. You, you're trying. If you've watched the show, you understand. Mister E finds a canteen full of water. Shelton runs away from, runs away with a lighter and some rope. Shelton's very nice. George, George, a mayoral rival, runs away from the cornucopia. Mayor Jones, Fred's adopted dad, scares Vincent, a movie star, as a vampire runaway. Professor Pericles, the Scooby equivalent who is intimidating as all hell, despite the fact he's a bird. Crybaby Clown, a monster voiced by Mark Hamill, finds a backpack full of camping equipment. Velma runs away. Nova runs away. Somehow a Scrappy clone that's not annoying. This show hates Scrappy so much, they mention him once. And it's just how bad he is. Sheriff Stone runs away, and Alice runs away. Alex is a paid-for-hire monster. Scooby pushes Mayor Jones off a cliff during a knife fight. Oof. Shelton constructs a shack. Chargargothicon picks flowers. 
Hot Dog Water, Cry Baby Clown, Alice Sharestone, and Nova Hunt for Other Tributes. Professor Pericles explores the arena. Mr. E and Daphne hunt for other tributes. Judy defeats Br- Brad in a fight but spares his life. Makes sense. Fred injures himself. Come on, Fred, you're better than that. Vincent receives a clean. Vincent receives a hatchet from an unknown sponsor. Grady Gator discovers a river. Cassidy and Nan split up for resources. Velma discovers a cave. George tries to spearfish the trident. Andy discovers a cave. Three cannon shots can be heard in the distance. Shaggy from District Two. Harlan from District 9, and Mayor Jones from District 11. Which I believe means that we're down to 21 characters in the cast. Alright, Fred and Sheriff, keep going. Night 1. Alice, Daphne, Mr. E, and Nan tell each other ghost stories to lighten the mood. Cassidy tries to treat her in fashion. Brad passes out from exhaustion. Grady Gator attempts to start a fire, but is unsuccessful. Judy passes out from exhaustion. Scooby and Angie talk about the tribute still alive. Cryberry Clown receives clean water from an unknown sponsor. Hot Dog Water and Chagro Gothicon hold hands. Velma attacks Vincent, but George protects him, killing Velma. Nova destroys Professor Pericles' supplies while he's asleep. That's good, but I'm not sure how long it'll last. Shelton receives a hatchet from an unknown sponsor, and Fred tries to sing himself to sleep. Day 2. Shelton tries to sleep through the entire day. Alice begs for Vincent to kill her. He refuses keeping Alice alive. Cassidy attacks Judy, but she manages to escape. George sees smoke rising in the distance, but decides not to investigate. Scooby defeats Angie in a fight, but spares her life. Professor Pericles questions his sanity. Fred, Daphne, and Mr. E hunt for other tributes. Nova hunts for other tributes. Brad receives a hatcher from an unknown sponsor. Crybaby Clown tends to Chargar Gothicon's wounds. Gr- Grady Gator practices archery. Non receives an explosive from an unknown sponsor. Hot dog water diverts Sheriff Stone's attention and runs away. One cannon shot can be heard in the distance. Velma from District 2, which means that we are down to the top tw- 20, and District 2 is out of play. Ooh boy. Uh, let's proceed. Night 2. Vincent tends to his wounds. Shelton looks at the sky. Nan receives a hatchet from an unknown sponsor. Brad questions his sanity. Alice cries herself to sleep. Mr. E is awoken by nightmares. Sheriff Stone tries to sing himself to sleep. Cassidy, Nova, Fred, and Judy sleep in shifts. Grady Gator loses sight of where he is. George, Andy, Professor Pericles, and Chargar Gothica tell each other ghost stories to lighten the mood. Hot Dog Water and Daphne run run into each other and decide to choose for the night. Scooby loses sight of where he is. And Crybaby Clown is awoken by nightmares. Vincent forces Nova to kill Judy or Hot Dog Water. She decides to kill Hot Dog Water. Cassidy runs away from Grady to Gator. Mr. E camouflages himself in the bushes. Daphne spears a fish with a trident. Andrew sees clean water from an unknown sponsor. Scooby poisons Chargar Gothicon's drink. She drinks it and dies. Yeesh. Scooby does not want to get scared. Allison, Crabby, Clown hunt for other tributes. Sheriff Stone, Professor Pericles, Fred, Nan, and George hunt for other tributes. Shelton attacks Brad, but he manages to escape. Two cannon shots can be heard in the distance. Hot Dog Water from District 4 and Chargar Gothicon from District 8. Which I believe means 20 minus 2. 18 people are left with still District 2 being the only district taken out of play. Go back to following tributes and proceed. Night 3. Cassidy and Vincent talk about the tributes still alive. Scooby defeats Brad in a fight, but spares his life. Crappy Clown tends to his infection. Mr. E sets Grady Gator on fire with a Molotov. Okay. Nan, Nan and Fred's. Nan sets Fred on fire with a mo- with a Molotov. Judy. Uh, all right. I see where he is, and I see who he's paired up with. I'm scared. Judy begs for Daphne to kill her. She refuses keeping Judy alive. Alice and Shelton talk about the tribute still alive. George sets up camp for the night. Professor Pericles pledges with Sheriff Stone to kill him. He refuses keeping Professor Cla- Pericles alive. Okay, thank goodness. Angie tends to her wounds, and Nova looks up at the night sky. Day four, and Nan injures herself. Cassidy is pricked by thorns while picking berries. Judy overhears Professor Pericles and Alice talking in the distance. George and Shelton work together for the day. Crybaby Clown constructs a shack. Sheriff Stone and Angie track down and kill Vincent. Brad, Mr. E, Scooby, and Nova raid Daphne's camp while she is hunting. Okay, okay. Three cannon shots can be heard in the distance. Grady Gator from District 10, Fred from District 1, and 
Vincent from District 8. Which means that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 people left with Districts 2 and 8 out of play. Let's proceed. Daphne and Nun run into each other and decide a truce for the night. Judy sees the fire but stays hidden. Scooby and Crybaby clowns the stories about themselves to each other. Share stone screens for help. Cassidy begs for Alice to kill her. She refuses keeping Cassidy alive. Angie climbs up a tree and rests. Shelton quietly hums. Nova and Professor Pericles huddle for warmth. Mr. E questions his sanity. George sees fresh food from an unknown sponsor. Brad thinks about winning. Day 5. Scooby Jill skills Judy while she is resting. Cassidy overhears Shelton and Alice talking in the distance. Nova diverts Angie's attention and runs away. Nan receives a hatchet from an unknown sponsor. Sheriff Stone begs for Mr. E to kill him. He refuses keeping Sheriff Stone alive. Thank you, Mr. E. Brad explores the arena. Professor Pericles is picked by thorns while picking berries. Daphne cannot handle the cir- circumstances and commits suicide. Crybaby clown sprains his ankle running away from George. Avocados. Two cannons can be heard in the distance. Judy from District 6, Daphne from District 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 characters left. With districts one, two, and eight out of play, most of the Mystery Inc. gang is down. I say most. Let's proceed. George sets a fire. Mr. E receives medical supplies from an unknown sponsor. Sheriff Stone and Shelton hold hands. Cassidy tends to her wounds. Brad climbs a tree to rest. Nan and Alice run into each other and decide to choose for the night. Professor Pericles, AMG, Scoo- and Scooby chat discuss the games what might happen in the morning. Nova receives a explosive from an unknown sponsor. Crybaby Clown cries himself to sleep. <laughs> Day 6, Professor Pericles diverts Nan's attention and runs away. Angie receives an explosive from an unknown sponsor. Brad fishes. Shelton overhears Nova and Cassidy talking in the distance. Sheriff Stone and Alice hunt for other tributes. Mr. E hunts for other tributes. Crybaby Clown diverts George's attention and runs away. Scooby fishes. No cannon shots can be heard in the distance. Night 6. George defeats Nova in a fight but spares a life. Cassidy and Brad tell stories about themselves to each other. Thus, a paracleus starts a fire. Angie begs for Star of Stone to kill her. He refuses keeping Angie alive. Shelton tends to his wounds. Mr. E and Nan huddle for warmth. Angie climbs a tree to rest. Scoo- Crybaby climbs things about home and Scooby tries to treat his infection. Day 7. Mr. E camouflages himself in the bushes. Cassidy questions her sanity. Sheriff Stone collects fruit from a tree. Brad steals from Crybaby Clown while he's not looking. George hunts for other tributes. Angie sprains her ankle, running away from Alice. Nan searches for firewood. Nova severely injures Shelton and leaves him to die. And Scooby steals from Professor Pericles while he isn't looking. One cannon shot can be heard in the distance. Shelton, Shelton from District 9. Which means we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 people left with districts 1, 2, 8, and 9 out of play. Let's proceed. Night 7. Mr. E stays awake all night. Professor Pericles receives clean water from an unknown sponsor. Sheriff Stone lets Nova into his shelter. Scooby convinces George to snuggle with him. Angie, Crybaby Clown, and Alice discuss the games of what might happen in the morning. Brad sees a fire but stays hidden. Nan Na- sets up camp for the night. Cassidy goes to sleep. Day eight. Wow, this is the longest Hunger Games ever in the series. Nova, Scooby, and Brad get into a fight. Scooby triumphantly kills them both. Cassidy fishes. Angie kills Sheriff Stone as he tries to run. Crybaby clown fishes. George spears a tris- fish with a trident. Alice injures herself. Professor Pericles over here is not in Mr. E talking in the distance. Three cannon shots can be heard in the distance. Nova from District 3, Brad from District 6, and Sheriff Stone from District 4. Which means we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 people left with Districts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9 out of play. Um, Professor Pericles, I guess, but Scooby. Oh, oh crap. Scooby's approaching on that record, Nelson. Could Scooby be the most bloodthirsty character? I don't know. I'm going to root for Professor Pericles, but Scooby's approaching that record. 
Crybaby Clown receives fresh food from an unknown sponsor. Nanda defeats Professor Pericles in a fight but spares his life. Cassidy is unable to start a fire and sleeps without warmth. Mr. E forces George to kill Alice or Angie. He decides to kill Alice. Okay. Hunger Games. The feast. The cornucopia is replenished with food supplies, weapons, and memoirs from their tribute families. Nan decides not to go, to go to the feast. Professor Pericles and Scooby work together to drown George. Oh, man. One more and he's tied for the record. Angie snaps Cassidy's neck and Crabby Clown kills Mr. E with a hatchet. Proceed. Day 9. Professor Pericles tries to sleep through the entire day. Scooby makes a wooden spear. Crybaby Clown searches for a water source. Angie thinks about home and non questions her sanity. Four cannon shots can be heard in the distance. Alex from District 7, George from District 11, Cassidy from District 7, and Mr. E from District 5. So if we see everyone with status, we have one, two, three, four, five people left. All of them have a kill. And Scooby. Needs two more kills, and he holds the record for most kills in a single Hunger Games. One more, and he ties it. Proceed. Scooby and non sleep in shifts. Angie throws a knife into Professor Pericles' head. Darn it. Crybaby Clown dies trying to escape the arena. Okay, so he could still break the record, but he'd have to kill them both on his own. Angie, Scooby, and non get into a fight. Angie triumphantly kills them both. Four cannon shots can be heard in the distance. Professor Pericles from District 5, Crybaby Clown from District 10, Scooby from District 3, and Non from District 12. The winner is Angie from District 12. That's Angie Dinkley. Oh, I forgot to write Dinkley, but that's Velma's mom. Anyways, Angie, Scooby, Two Mystery, Ink. Well, all right. The epic. No, we all. I only did Scooby Doo mystery in characters, but this is just Scooby Doo. Fifteen is coming up next, and now it's time to do my usual rankings feel. In twenty fourth place, Shaggy. In twenty third, Harlan Elson. In twenty first, twenty second, Mayor Fred Jones Senior. In twenty first place, Velma. In twentieth place, Hot Dog Water. In nineteenth place. HP Hatecraft, aka Char Gargothicon. In 18th, Grady Gator. In 17th, Fred. In 16th, Vincent Van Gool. In 15th, Judy Reeves. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> In 18th place, Grady Gator with one kill. 17th, Fred. 16th, Vincent Van Gool. 15th, Judy Reeves. 14th, Daphne Blake. 13th, Sh Skipper Shelton. 12th place, Nova with two kills. 11th place, Brad. 10th place, Shara Stone with one kill. 9th place, Alice May. 8th place, George Avocados with two kills. 7th place, Cassidy Williams. And 6th place, Mr. E with one kill. And 5th place, Professor Pericles with one kill. And 4th place, Crybaby Clown with one kill. And 3rd place, Scooby-Doo with three, six kills. And 2nd place, Non Blake with one kill. And in 1st place, with a stunning 12, 7 kills, Tied for the record with Nelson is Angie Dinkley. Oh boy. Um, tied for the record. Wasn't paying attention to her, clearly. Here's your summary. Ten days. Well, I mean, this is the longest Hunger Games. Anyways, district placements. In 12th place, District 2. In 11th place, District 8. In 10th place, District 1. In 9th place, District 9. In 8th place, District 6. In 7th place, District 4. In 6th place, District 11. In 5th place, District 7. In 4th place, District 5. In 3rd place, District 10. In 2nd place, District 3. And in 1st place, District 12. Well, that's going to cover it for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed, and until next time, and with our next suggestion, I'll see y'all later. Goodbye!